Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A single mother in the middle of a mental health crisis takes her three young children into this Pontiac field and tells them to lie down and only one would survive. Monica Kennedy froze to death along with her two young sons, a three-year-old and a nine-year-old. Only her 10-year-old daughter survived the freezing temperatures and she ran to find help when she realized that her mother and brothers were dead. Mara McDonald live in Pontiac tonight. Uh, she was not homeless, right Mara? Devin, no, she was not homeless. As a matter of fact, her apartment is just a couple blocks away here from the Oakland County Sheriff's substation here in Pontiac. She has family here in Pontiac, but when they tried to intervene, she just sort of brushed them off. Monica and her children had lived in this apartment in Pontiac for the last six years, but recent behavior, family describes her as extremely paranoid, had her taking her children out into the cold on foot for several days, wandering around the old Lakeside Projects property in Pontiac. Over the course of a couple days, we actually had been getting calls about uh, a woman and kids not dressed appropriately for the conditions. Deputies would go there, look all through the area and couldn't find anybody. Uh, we later learned from the surviving daughter that she had told her kids anytime anybody approached to run. Neighbors who saw Monica and her children did call 911 and did try to intervene. They was hungry. I said, well, don't, uh, what you do? And she said, I, I didn't let them in, but her brother, Arthur, he, she said he tried to give the young lady some money and she wouldn't accept it. Saturday night, the sheriff says Monica told three-year-old Malik, nine-year-old Kyle, and 10-year-old Lily to lie down with her in this field. Only Lily would survive the freezing temperatures, running to a nearby home when she realized her mother and brothers were dead. She's in the hospital right now. Her maternal grandmother is with her. After talking to Kennedy's aunt, it's clear they're overwhelmed by what's happened and no one saw this coming, despite her recent out-of-the-ordinary actions. What brought on her mental health crisis is unclear. Clear, but the father of her children was shot and killed in 2021, and the trial of the accused killer is in process right now. Back here live in speaking with Monica's Aunt Rhodesia this evening, um, they're trying to pull everything together. You know, family that is out of town is coming here. They have started a GoFundMe. We've got info on that on clickondetroit.com if you are interested in that. Um, you know, Rhodesia told me if it had just been one family member, they, they could have handled it, but it's now three that need to be buried, and Lily is clearly going to need some help. We're live in Pontiac tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Oh, it's just dreadful. All right, Mara. Back in Detroit, police shoot an armed man at a gas station on the city's west side, all caught on green light cameras. Police say this morning... Now, the man walked into the Sitgo on 8 Mile and Berg, locked the door, and started waving a gun around. Police say he pointed the gun at customers outside and then at police when they arrived. Local force crime and safety expert Darnell Blackburn explains why the officer opened fire. If that gun is raised at them, they are justified in being able to fire their weapon to unfortunately eliminate the threat of anybody getting hurt, themselves or anybody. Police said the man did not fire any shots. He was taken to the hospital where he was alert and talking before going into surgery, and no one else ended up being hurt. In about 12 hours, Detroit police will provide new information in the case of Tracy Golden, a beloved mother killed outside of her neighborhood liquor store last month. Pamela Osborne joins us live tonight with more on the case and what we can expect, Pam. Well, Kimberly, it's almost been three weeks now since Tracy Golden was shot and killed. And as you said, in a matter of hours, we're expecting to learn more about that man on surveillance video who police say shot and killed her. It was Wednesday, December 28th. Here's Tracy Golden walking out of a liquor store on Grand River Avenue near Outer Drive. It's 1042 p.m. She stopped here for juice. As she exits the store and nears her SUV, you see a man in dark colored clothing walk toward her from the other end of the parking lot. He pulls a gun, then shoots Tracy in the stomach. She's rushed to Sinai Grace, the very hospital where she worked as a respiratory therapist, saving lives. She died from her injuries. 
Since then, we take it day by day. The tragic loss of her dear friend Tracy called Laura Davis to activism in her honor. Put those guns down. This is senseless. We should love one another. Police say the man who shot Tracy took off in her gray Dodge journey. The SUV was recovered a day after her death at the scene of an armed robbery at the Family Dollar Store on East 7 Mile. Police releasing this image of a person of interest in that crime. So who is that man in that surveillance image from that dollar store robbery? Um, is he the same person who shot Tracy and took her SUV? And where is he now? Those are just some of the few questions we hope to have answered tomorrow. Reporting live outside of DPD headquarters, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. And we will certainly be following it, Pam. Thank you. All right, time now for a check of the forecast. Is it uh, it's a rainy night across Metro Detroit here? Uh, pretty mild. That's why it's all uh, green behind uh, Kim right now. Let's get over to our forward meteorologist Kim Adams with where things stand. Kim? Well, it is all green, but I have to tell you, it is a cold rain because we still have temperatures in the 30s. Now we're above freezing. We're above what we should be for an afternoon high. Our high temperature should be 32. Right now, temps are in the mid to upper 30s, but it's definitely uh, raining on the east side, a little heavier than it is on the west side. Let's zoom in a bit closer here using our exact track 40 radar. Rain in Richmond, down to Macomb, Sterling Heights, and Warren, Hamtramck also getting some rain. And the downriver areas, including the city of Detroit, Ecorse getting a few showers, Dearborn, Melvindale, all raining. We'll continue to have a few light scattered rain showers throughout the evening, but nothing really heavy. In fact, it's dry now in Farmington Hills, but raining in Heartland and Salem. Northville getting a few light sprinkles at this hour, but again, it's just that very cold, damp air. Tomorrow we'll have mostly cloudy skies and another chance for just very light rain in the afternoon. But notice the temps 46 degrees by four o'clock. If you want to keep up to date on the rain when it's coming, when it's going in your neighborhood, the best way to do it is download our forewarn weather app. Just go to your favorite app store, type in WDIV and download the free forewarn weather app. Today is a day of service in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Metro Detroiters took time to honor the legacy of Dr. King. In Southfield, they held their annual Peace Walk this morning, originating from Hope United Methodist Church. The walk kicked off at the church, making its way toward the Southfield Pavilion. The event returned after two years off due to the pandemic. In Detroit, MLK Day Committee called for a citywide mobilization to recognize the civil rights hero. There was a rally, a march, and a meal this afternoon at St. Matthew's St. Joseph Episcopal Church on Detroit's west side. Today's speakers, part of social movements that took place across the country. Also in Detroit at Dawson Elementary and Middle School, a day of activities included honoring Kyra Harris Bolden, Michigan's first black female to sit on the state's high court. A mural was revealed in her honor. Bolden says the mural also honors the dream of Dr. King. Being the first black woman to sit on the Michigan Supreme Court, I think is an awesome achievement but it has taken until 2023 for us to get to that point. So we are moving forward, uh, but there clearly is much more work to be done. And I think that this is a wonderful day that exemplifies that, celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King's widow, Coretta Scott King, and musician Stevie Wonder fought for years to, sell, to create the federal holiday. Now it falls on the third Monday in January each year. Could be more searches ahead for classified documents at locations connected to President Biden. About 20 classified documents were found after searches of a private office in Washington, D.C. and his two homes in Delaware. White House attorneys say there are no visitors logs that track guests who visit President Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home. Sources say more searches are possible, but it's not clear who would conduct them nor where they would take place. President Biden has used other office spaces and his family had rented another home in Northern Virginia.